This is quite possibly... Okay, no, this is the most important theological concept you'll ever get. Oh, come on, Jesse. What a claim. <laughs> well, hear me out. You have to know God as a sane, loving Father. You have to know Jesus the same way. Obviously, he's not the Father. But what I'm saying is that you have to know God as a sane, rational, loving God. Oh, of course, Jesse. Why would you bring up something so obvious and silly? It's because a lot of theology does not paint him that way. And if you believe that theology, then it will produce insecurity in your life. So let's talk about that. What produces security? Love in all its facets, which includes discipline and guidance and direction and mercy and kindness and care. It, love is a many faceted thing, right? But true love, which is what God is, includes all the healthy ingredients that a person needs to be secure in life. That's just the way it goes. We can see that truth played out in people's lives all the time. Ask any good psychologist and they'll tell you. So, if your view of God is not one of a loving parent who has your best in mind and who will discipline you for the right reasons, not for the wrong ones, and who doesn't throw you curveballs and who doesn't always have your best in mind, then you will, then that incorrect belief will produce insecurity in your life. And that is not a good thing, especially when it comes to God, because then you will pass that belief on to others and produce insecurity in their lives. And no, nobody likes insecurity speaking as one who has dealt with it for different reasons in my life. So what are the specific theological doctrines that produce insecurity in a person's life? I couldn't tell you exactly what they're called because I'm not a theologian. But here is at least one. Maybe I'll think of a couple. I can think of two right off the top of my head. One is the doctrine wherein God just simply chooses people arbitrarily to save and just arbitrarily doesn't save others for no rhyme or reason. This is, I think this is, this might be Calvinism. I'm not sure. I'm sure it fits into some doctrinal category somewhere. So basically that paints a picture of God who is just completely arbitrary has no reasons for what he does, and he just chooses to love some people and not to love others. And yes, I understand there are Bible verses that say similar things to this. Jacob I loved, Esau I hated, in Romans 11, or Romans 10, somewhere in there, 9, 10, 11, Paul goes through a big dissertation about it. So, if that's your God, and you don't understand the scriptures correctly, then that's going to produce insecurity in your life because who knows what this God could do to you at any time because he's totally arbitrary and has no good reasons for what he does. <laughs> Which will produce an insecure relationship in your life with your Heavenly Father. The second doctrine that I heartily disagree with that produces insecurity in your life is the doctrine that God creates evil. I'll do respect to my friends who believe this, but I have to say this. If you view God, your father, as a God who originally created evil for some reason to show us the contrast or to teach us lessons, I've heard both or possibly some other reasons, or simply because the Bible says it in Isaiah, I create the destroyer. 
Well, then that is also going to produce, that belief is also going to produce insecurity in your life. Because again, you have a God who for some reason decided that evil was good for people. And since God never changes, well, he could decide that again at any time, which causes what? It causes fear in your life and fear produces insecurity. Fear always produces insecurity and love always produces security. And both of those doctrines that I just mentioned, and I'm sure there's others, produce fear in your life. And fear produces insecurity. Especially in children, if you teach them these things. You, generally, anybody. So, when you adopt these two, and probably other beliefs about God, that are in direct contradiction to his nature as a loving parent, the perfect loving father, you invite insecurity into your life and into the lives of those you influence, including possibly your children. So, I say to you, all of us, you must get to know God personally. You must get to know Jesus personally. Get to know the Holy Spirit personally. You must as Yoda would say, get to know Jesus, you must. Get to know the Father, you must. Get to know the Holy Spirit, you must. Secure you will be, says Yoda. Leave your life, fear will, says Yoda. <laughs> you have to get to know him to realize that what? He's trustworthy. And he has your back. And he's not going to pull the rug out from under you by creating evil in your life or by arbitrarily not choosing you for no exp- for no reason and he's not obligated to explain <laughs> if that's your god then good luck because you're going to live an insecure spiritual life with god and you'll pass it on to others possibly even your own children don't do it You have to get to know God personally to realize who he really is. And I tell you, I guarantee who he really is, is a loving, good father. Jesus is a loving, good Lord. He's been described in Isaiah as the everlasting father. These these people, (laughs) for lack of a better term, God the father, well, they are people. Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit, they are infinitely, eternally, good as in they don't create evil they don't just arbitrarily choose things they're not robots they have your best in mind and they always love you and love never changes and his nature never changes so you need to abandon theology that contradicts that or I'm repeating myself now you'll be insecure and you'll pass it on to others. Thank you and have a nice day.